Hey nerds, I'm talking about Origin, the new film written and directed by Ava DuVernay. Is it her best or a miss? We'll get into it starting now. Welcome to the Nerd Social Show. I am Nathan. Hey, so you are probably watching this either on the 19th or after I saw this movie first last week because of awards voting at home and then again on Monday in a theater with a bunch of people. Different experiences, but very impactful both times I saw it. But before I get into that, let's go over the spoiler-free logline for this movie. Origin is a compelling drama that delves into the life of writer Isabel Wilkinson as she navigates personal tragedy and embarks on a global journey of investigation and discovery, revealing profound insights into to the human condition. So yeah, this was provided to me, like I said, for awards consideration last week. This originally debuted, I believe, at Venice last year, and it also had a short stint in LA and New York but it goes wide on the 19th this year. And it's been difficult to actually see the movie unless you were in those two locations. And I'll get into why, why that might be a little bit later. But this movie stars Ajinu Ellis Taylor, who you might know from the movie King Richard with Will Smith. It also stars John Banthal, who you might know from Punisher, and Nisi Nash, who you might know from Dahmer, and also earlier this week at winning an Emmy and thanking herself very deservedly. It's a lot of lines. It's vague as to what actually is going on in this movie because this movie doesn't have a typical movie structure with a villain. It's really a hero's journey of a scholar or a artist putting pieces together. This is why I like this movie poster. They're using another movie poster. I've seen another movie poster where she's just looking out into the sky. I think this is more evocative of actually what's going on in the movie. This is what we'll consider as a Pulitzer Prize author and she wrote the book Cass, which was released in 2020, a couple months after after the murder of George Floyd. And that's what this movie is an adaptation of. However, that book is a nonfiction book with a lot of information and facts laying out her research. This movie is more of an exploration of how she came to her conclusions, how she crafted the book, and also, as the love line says, the personal tragedies that she endured along the way. This movie is very emotional. I ugly cried when I watched it at home. I ugly cried in the theater with people when I saw it on Monday. It's very good. It's very emotional for a movie that is basically just following someone's creative process and research process. She's almost like a Deanna Jones putting pieces together around the world, but there's no MacGuffin. That what she's in search of is knowledge and trying to understand the world better, which again, doesn't seem like a compelling plot for a movie, but because of the personal things that she's going through and the subject matter that she's researching, it is a very compelling movie. As written and directed by Ava DuVernay. When I mentioned earlier that it was a little difficult to actually see this movie last year, that's possibly because of the subject matter and the difficulty that Ava had in getting this greenlit by traditional studios. Apparently she went to Netflix first and they started to work with her on this and then they wanted to make a bunch of changes so she decided to go a different route and actually get funding from the Ford Foundation. So it seems like she got funding to make the film but not a lot of funding for promotional part of the movie making process, which nowadays is almost the same amount as making the film. So she also shot this film in four different countries here in the US, in Germany, and in India over the course of about 30 something days, which is a feat in and of itself because the protagonist, Isabel, travels to all these places as she's trying to understand the origin of her discontent. She sets out on this journey, or the reason that she sets out on this journey is because of the murder of Trayvon Martin back in 2012. And as a bit of a warning, there is a depiction of that in this movie. When I first saw this, I was a bit triggered by it and it was a bit disturbing. I subsequently learned that Ava got permission to film this by Trayvon's mom. And even though that scene is challenging and there are other challenging scenes in this movie, I wouldn't let that dissuade you from seeing the film because the film is quite frankly a masterpiece. I've watched it a couple times now, as I said, I'll probably watch it again. I just need space between watching it because every time I watch it, I, I cry a little and actually even sometimes when I think about some of the scenes, I cry a bit. 
Eugenius Ellis is exceptional in this movie. John Barenthal is also very good. And Nisi Nash. The benefit of seeing this in the theater and not waiting to see it at home is the communal experience of watching this and people's reactions to Nisi Nash. But not just the levity that you see injects into the film, but the emotional stuff as well. Ava shot this on film, 16 millimeter film stock, which is the first time she shot on a film. And apparently previously she always shot digital, but because she had more control control and no one to to answer to in this film. This is the first time she shot a film. I think that the results are a little mixed. At the beginning of the movie, it seems a little muddy to me. And I looked up the DP, Matthew J. Lloyd. He's worked on a lot of Marvel films, Far From Home, Captain Marvel. He worked on Daredevil show and Insecure. So he definitely knows what he's doing. And the majority of the film looks great. But like I said, at the beginning, it's a little muddy, a little rainy for my taste. Maybe I come to appreciate it over time on subsequent watches. But honestly, it's me nitpicking it at this point because like I said, the movie is exceptional. The, the writing is, is is great and honestly if I had seen this movie last year before I put my top 10 list together it definitely would have been high on the list if not the top of the list when I voted for awards last week I voted for the best drama of the year the music in this movie is great like I said except for the beginning it looks beautiful as she shifts from location to location one other nitpick that I had is that it was a little bit difficult to track where our main character Isabel is in time. She shifts back and forth, not just with Isabel, different time periods in history, Nazi Germany, Harlem in the 1930s, India in present day, and also in the 30s, rural South in, in the 1940s. That shifting back and down doesn't really bother me. It's clear where they are. It's just because we are following Isabel's personal tragedies and also her development of the book. Seeing where she is in time was a little bit difficult without like lower third. She doesn't actually give you a location or a date and watching an interview with her recently that it was an intentional decision. It's not a big thing. I didn't get terribly lost, but it's one thing that I noted when I watched the first time. But besides those small nitpicks, I really enjoyed the film to the extent that you can enjoy something that kind of guts you, but it's not dour all the way through. Like I said, Nisi Nash injects quite a bit of humor into the movie. And even if that wasn't there, the things that are discussed about the connectedness of human existence are just so profound that it's worth watching. So those are my general thoughts on the movie. And my rating for this movie is going to be a movie marathon. So 9 out of 10. Like I said, I've already watched it twice. I intend to watch it again. I just need time between viewings. Besides the small nitpicky things that I have, this is a pretty unconventional but beautiful film that will probably be studied in film school. And actually over time, I may come to appreciate some of Ava's artistic decisions that didn't necessarily jive with me. Like the omission of the lower thirds or the decision to shoot this on film. So it might be become a 10 for me. But right now, I'm going to give 9 out of 10 our movie marathon. And as I said, I voted for this. It's the best drama last week when I was voting for awards. That is what I think, but I want to hear what you guys think. And also, let me know if you want me to talk about this in a more spoilery way. Comment down below, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, guys. Bye.